Hi, everyone. Um, so a couple of days ago, I did my, it was journal 86, um, the one on trolls. Uh, maybe you saw it. Uh, I know some trolls saw it because, like, obviously, I got a couple of posts. Um, that was like the troll, uh, and like even more obviously than that, I just 86 them, you know, I just delete them. That's what the whole journal was about. I'm not going to engage. Like, I just don't know, like, oh, well, I'll show you. Like, that's not, that's not me. You know, I've never felt this, this like angry urge to like show anyone any like forcible sightseeing. You know, that's not a part of my character. And I don't know if it's ever, maybe it's something like when I was in high school or something, but um, for a long time, it hasn't been a part of my nature. And I'm going to prove that to you by reading a passage from a book that I published a little over a decade ago. I was 33 when this one came out. Uh, I was 43 when the novel came out. I'm not going to show it to you because I don't want to encourage anyone to buy it. Um, it was a different world back then. I kind of regret publishing this one because it was a very different world and I was a different me. Um, but parts of me have held true. And so this is sort of like my stand up comedy book, but I was like sitting down, it's like sit down comedy. Uh, and this passage is about road rage. So um, road rage is just weird. While sitting on a bench today, I heard one driver scream at another, what the fuck is the matter with you? And then the screamer followed up with some death threats. This anger was caused by the recipient of the screaming failing to make a turn as quickly as would have been convenient for the one doing the screaming. This is not an emotionally healthy person. At least once a week while I'm driving and stopped at a red light, there will be an angry man sitting in a vehicle behind me. When the light becomes green, if I don't accelerate immediately and aggressively enough, that angry man will honk his angry horn. After he's done honking, he will lift his right hand from the steering wheel, supinate that hand, i.e. rotate it so his palm is facing upward, and then begin to karate chop it back and forth, slicing the air, as if to say, what is it that you are doing? Or, why are you not accelerating and then traveling at a speed that would satisfy me? In all these road rage situations, someone honks, tailgates while revving and re-revving his engine, deliberately cuts me off, issues a hand gesture I'm supposed to interpret as offensive. All of this for the purpose of teaching me a lesson. What's the lesson plan? What is it that you're trying to teach me here? Okay, you honked and swerved, waving your fist while cursing my average pace of acceleration. That's fine. Good job. What happens next? Am I supposed to react with my own fit of screaming, my own bout of traveler's vengeance? I'm not sure I have it in me. I don't really have the adrenaline for that kind of a response. So I guess you win. Final score, you won, me zero. You sure showed me. That victory will get you far in life. But honestly, who's actually keeping score? Are you? Are you really recording wins and losses when you get home? Like you have a bulletin board in your bedroom where you post final standings of driver quarrels? If so, if you really are keeping score, I hate to break it to you, but you lose. If you're the one who gets all worked up over someone else's driving, you're really the loser in that exchange. It's your own ulcer and cancer you're brewing, not mine. It's not my blood pressure that's spiking. I'm not the one exacerbating my hypercortisolemia while swerving around and honking and then scribbling furiously on my bulletin board. Every time you have a panic attack in your vehicle and I decide not to join you, only your vasculature and overall physical health suffers. Mine's fine. So if you really are keeping score, or so if you are in fact keeping score, your anger is a handicap. You're not going to win anything until you get it under control. Okay, so that was, I mean, that was like a little over a decade ago. You know, I was 33. And so a decade and some months ago, and then fast forward the world, those you know years and months, and I haven't changed my philosophy, my uh, you know just like behavior, you know how I react. None of that has been changed uh, in response to road rage and the road ragers. Uh, but I've just added my like bridge rage response. I do the same thing. I sort of shrug and like emotionlessly 86 them. And I think that's the most compassionate response um, that we should all do. So in the last one, I'm going to say this is a can of spray paint. Um, in the last one, I talked about, about tagging a little bit and, and, and like graffiti in the last one. And so let's say like a tagger comes up and you know tags that like childish lettering like the bubbly fourth grade lettering um, on your neighbor's fence it's a name or whatever like the name he pretends to go by um if the fence owner just leaves it there 
it just doesn't address it and it just sits there. That just encourages the behavior, that encourages more of it. Like I'm not a psychologist, there's gonna be people in the world who are experts at this and I'm not one of them. But when you look at the fence, it, it, for like one perspective of this is it encourages others. You know, it's like the fire hydrant that smells like piss, every dog is gonna come to it. And I, I think that sort of tag is gonna have that effect. But the individual himself, the tagger, him, you know, Mr. Tagger, is, is three months go by, four, five, six months go by, and the tagger is gonna come over and be like, oh, there I am. Did you see my little bubble lettering that I learned in the first grade? That's still there. The world sees my name. It's time to spread my seed further. That's kind of what it seems like it is. It's a like a non-biological surrogate for um, like seed spread. Like if Genghis Khan were alive today, I think he would be a tagger. I mean, he would be a troll. He would be a troll and probably a tagger sort of spreading his his you know, good name, like g -Con and like whatever, that, that would be on all the fences. And I think there's the digital equivalent, I think is the same thing, where if we don't um, paint over those fences, it just, you know, continues to encourage the behavior among the trolls. And so I think in the interest of non-trolls everywhere, we should all just paint the fence, um, you know, clean things up, and just let the, but in the interest of the trolls themselves, I think it's also important um, that we don't respond because it's not a fair fight. I mean, it really is. I mean, I think about it. The smarter someone is, you know, the, the, the more emotionally intelligent someone is, the less likely they are to, to participate in, the, in that kind of troll duggery. And every comment just confirms this. I mean, it's sort of sad that like the world's education system like left them behind. Pick a topic, whatever they do. They're clearly ill-informed on that topic. I mean, I don't know how their brains didn't learn stuff, but they're ill-informed. Um, they seem oblivious to what effective rhetoric might look like, you know, and I, I feel bad. Like, I just don't know what they're learning in troll school. But like the lack of human education, I mean, that's obvious to everyone with like a three digit IQ. Um, and so if you're just an ordinary person, I'm an ordinary person, if you're an ordinary person too, that puts you at an extraordinary advantage um, in a battle of wits against a troll, but be like besting them in that battle, that does not elicit a, like a happy response. And you know, that's not a lot of satisfaction and triumph that you're, it's like if you beat a seven-year-old in arm wrestling, like how much of a winner do you feel like? Or like it's in chess or something, a battle of wits, whatever. And the person you're playing against doesn't know the rules of chess and you're teaching them the rules while you're playing. <laughs> like you don't feel like heroic when you win that game. And if the other, if you like check me to in a really sort of embarrassing, you know, way, that doesn't end the quarrel if it's a troll. They're like, oh, okay, you did show me. You know, there is a lesson and I did learn my lesson and I was wrong and you're, that doesn't happen, right? All you're gonna do is find yourself fending off, I mean, even more unhinged, angry, bitter, crazy responses. And that's not happy for anyone. The whole world has made a worse place. So I think we should just, you know, again, enact our inner Mr. Rogers and just clean, you know, let, let respect and beauty circle the globe and do our part in, in contributing to that. So that's it, that's the last of my comments, maybe, um, unless I get some more, uh, you know, bitter troll posts that, that um, inspire another one of these, but I hope, I hope uh, you are farther down, further, I guess, because this isn't really a measurable road, further down that road than I am um, in, in sort of scrubbing the world of its ugliness and putting respect and compassion uh, is just painting the world in, in empathy. That's what I hope, that you're further along than I am. Uh, but I'm just rambling, and I, I hope there are some little nuggets that can be extracted there. So I'll see you next time.